In this video, we want to look at the work kinetic energy theorem. I have an elevator that's 1900 kilograms that accelerates upward at a constant 1.45 meters per second squared for 12 meters starting from rest. Use work to find the final speed of the system. Now if you've spent a bunch of time before this working with a kinematics and constant acceleration, you might immediately say, you know, I think I can solve that really fast. In fact, from constant acceleration equations, I know that the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared, which is zero in this case, plus twice the acceleration times the displacement. And you might be frustrated, why can't I just use that and get to the answer immediately? But the point is that we don't really care about the elevator. What we care about is understanding the connection between work and kinetic energy. But you should go ahead and solve that anyway. If I find the velocity, I find that it's 5.9 meters per second. This is essentially what we do at the end of the problem, where we check to see whether our answer makes sense. Well, I can calculate the answer at the beginning, now I can go use work to do it, and then when I get to the end, I'll know if I have the right answer. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a picture. I have an elevator that's accelerating up, I probably have a tension associated with it, and if I think about forces, I might go for a free body diagram, there's a tension up, a force due to gravity down, I have a positive coordinate system, and I do that to point out something that you should be careful of, and that's starting down one path too quickly. And this is a problem once you learn more physics. It's good to take a step back and think globally before you just blindly go ahead. Let's go back and think about what we know. We want to use work and find the final speed of the system. And we know that connection is through the work kinetic energy theorem. The work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. The change in kinetic energy is the final energy minus the initial. The initial is zero since we know it starts at rest. And the final kinetic energy is one half mv squared. This is our connection now between the work and the final speed of the system. What can I say about the total work? Well, I know the acceleration is constant, so that tells me that the total or net force is constant. I'm only in one dimension, and so I can use my relationship for work in one dimension for constant forces which is just the total or net force times the displacement where the values of the quantities are the magnitudes of the vectors and the signs indicate the direction. Well, what's the total force? In general, Newton's second law tells me that the total or net force is equal to the mass of that one object times the acceleration of that one object, which I know. So I don't have to do any more Newton's second law analysis. I can substitute that in directly. And that is equal to my kinetic energy, and I think you can see where this is going. If I solve for the velocity now, I get exactly the relationship I had before, and so I know I have the right answer, and I've already done the calculation. It's 5.9 meters per second. So what have we learned in this video? A little bit about work kinetic energy, but also about how important it is to take a step back in the visualization stage and think globally to be able to choose the right path instead of going blindly forward. Also, if you have multiple ways to calculate an answer, you should do so to make sure you get the right one.